So some people, even if you have been talking to them, they don't feel connected. <laughs> because, because uh, uh, you see, we usually have, we usually have the number of the people just on a whole master class we have been present. We should be three times more. So there is something that is wrong that we can work well on it. So my subject is how to connect with people. The subject, the the the, the, sub, uh, the theme is how to connect with people. And the subject is communication is different. So I. I'll talk about communication first. Communication is simply to, to, to get information from point A to point B. But it doesn't mean the other person will be able to give you the information back. So sometimes we can say, come to the Holy Master. Okay, you have communicated, but who are you? <clears throat> who are you? Why should I come? Yeah. I'm a child of God. Then you go like, okay, so what? Who, who are you? Because you see, there are different things that makes us not win the loss. We know many people preach the gospel, but few commit to the gospel. Sometimes we lack sensitivity. One, we lack sensitivity. Two, we lack discernment. The word discernment simply means what type of the season that a person is, is at, or what is the attitude that this person is in that is in the natural. In the spirit, what type of the spirit is this person operating in? Mm -hmm. But in the natural is what is the attitude the person is in? Is it a good mood or bad new? Yeah. Bad mood. But but if that is in the natural, this one is in the bad mood. This one is in the good mood. In the spirit is what type of the spirit is operating on this person? Is it the spirit? 
spirit from God or the spirit from the enemy or the spirit of the world. So discernment actually is to find people where they are. So the best way to connect with somebody is to find where they are at. Where are they at? Because if you don't know where they are, you can't take them to another level. You need to find the common ground. In the church, the common ground is the relationship with Jesus. That's a common ground. The relationship with Jesus. But in the secular, the common ground is respect. It's not even about the relationship. It's about respect. If they respect you, they will listen to you. If they don't respect you, they will not listen to you. So in the world, in the business world, the community of the business world is about respect. What you wear, who you are connected with, what type of a car you drive, what type of a house you live in, what type of environment you're in. It's about respect. Give me the respect, I respect you back. So, sometimes, if you want to reach out the business communities, how can you get them respect you? Because if they don't respect you, they will not listen to you. How can you get their respect? If you can get their respect, then they will listen to you. This is the, this is the business world, which is very unrich. The reason why the church is broke and the beauty, we don't have enough good buildings, it's because the business world has been unreached. The business world has been unreached. The people that have the billions and the millions of money they don't know about your God. Only broke people they know because they come to God, they want to be rich. Some of them. There's nothing wrong with that. Because the Bible says, call upon him in trouble. And you what? When you're in trouble, it's a good time to come to the Lord. If you don't have trouble, it's also a good time to be to come to the Lord. The Lord is not intimidated. He just wants you where you are. Some people say, I know I used to have a friend, he said, I want to sort out my personal problem first. That's when I'm going to come to church. You will never clean up yourself. You will never sort out the problems, no matter how hard you try. Right. Yeah. It's like somebody said, I'll start giving when I have one million dollars. If you can't give when you have one dollar, yeah. you will never give when you have a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, right. And you will never give when you have a thousand dollars. It's so difficult to give when you have a lot of money because you give a big portion. So you need to train yourself now. So anyway, that is for another day. But, 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 but you need to understand about how to connect with people. It's very important to connect with people where they are. What is the is their name? When you see somebody who comes in this place for the first time, know their name. Yeah. I'm not good at that, but I try. Know their name. Call them by their name. Ruah. How are you doing, Ruah? What's your name? Hmm? My name. My name. Next time, I need to say my name. You feel good. Hi, Sarah. Oh, can you see the smile? 
because they know our name. So know somebody's what? Name. name. So when we have somebody new here, the first thing you need to know is their name. Don't talk about your faith yet. <laughs> know their name. Yeah. Don't talk about your Jesus yet. Know their name. And how's it? How they're doing. If you take, get it, you get interested in, in them, they'll get interested in everything. Wow. One of the reasons why relationships fell. This is just from my own observation. I'm a student all the time. I'm in the classroom of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Learning from people and learning from my own failure, own mistakes, and my own achievements. I've seen that, okay, let me use this. When people are dating, they put more more effort on it. They buy flowers, they, they take the person for a date, and they do that. Now when they get married, they stop buying flowers, they stop taking the person for a date, then the relationship is ruined. One of the biggest key, one of the key, it's not the only one, you need to always make other people first in your life. If you want to win them, make them first. If you want to win somebody's heart, be interested in them before sharing your interest. Let them know that you are interested in When somebody comes here for the first time, let them know you are interested in them. You are not trying to take away. You are trying to give something. You are trying to give something. Look at where they are. Give them something they don't have. very important to always be second in terms of relationship so that you can have a horizon relationship. So if I make him the priority here, he will make you make me, I make you number one, you make me number one. So, how to connect with people, make them about them rather than about you. <laughs> Let them know you are interested in them. When people come to the Hollywood Mastery class, let them know that we are not trying to take away. We are trying to not trying to take away anything from them. We're trying to give them something. Let them know that they are coming to receive something and you have something to give it to them. Mm -hmm. Whenever people feel you want to take something from them, there is always a problem. When they feel you are giving something to them, there's always In the business world, you don't just share Jesus. Know that you are interested in their lives. Mm -hmm. Then they will ask you, what makes you this good man, this good lady? Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell them quickly. Tell them, are you really sure you want to hear <laughs> what makes me happy? I've used this one before when I was doing business. 
There was this man, he said, you are so honest, so loving, you, you bought my lunch. You are such a nice person, can I ask you what is your philosophy in life? Then I said, I don't want you to know about it. <laughs> I took a little bit of a while, because I knew I would be with this person for a week. I said, you are not ready to hear, because this person has to go and party, let's go and party, let's go and do this. And and at the same time, said, I like your energy, your spirit, and all that. Then I know the person is not ready. Yeah. All he has been telling me is party. I'm going to tell, tell him something is going to destroy his party. <laughs> <laughs> so, then one day, he told me something. He said, me and my wife, we can't get pregnant. Maybe you can tell me what's the solution. Then I said, is your wife around? He said, yes. I'd like to talk to you together with your wife. Now I got it. <laughs> now, I talk to them as a couple. Usually women are more recipient than men. So I focused on a woman. Because this man I already know, I already know he loves her. So if I can get her, God help. So I, I, I focused on her. I prophesied over her. I spoke things about her. She was like, honey, you didn't tell me you've been with this man for all this week. Honey, <laughs> why did you do that? He says, he didn't tell me. He does that. <laughs> I just thought he was my business partner. She said, then I said, I told her about stories about women that could not get pregnant, and I prayed for them, and the Lord opened their wombs, and they 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 have kids now. I showed them some of the pictures, I have some pictures of the kids that that that, that I prayed. Said this woman couldn't get pregnant for about eight years. I prayed for her. I look at the baby and look at this one. So wow. So I said, you are next. But before that, you need to receive a miracle worker. Hallelujah. What did she say? She wants a baby so desperate. So she received Jesus. Amen. I said, you won't be a good father because this baby you're going to be born belongs to Jesus. So you must have Jesus too in order to raise him. I said, oh, really? Okay. Jesus said, receive him. So, and they got saved. But what if I missed the time? The man will never get saved. He will never know the Lord. And I will never know his story. Sometimes, to connect with people, ask questions. Know them first before you let them know. Don't just some people who talk about themselves, they never know about that person. I'm giving you wisdom. Mm -hmm. Ask them a person. There are people I just ask them one person from another person, and it's one hour, I know who they are, they never know who I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they were not smart enough to ask me. But I've, got, I've gotten something from them, and they never got anything from me. Guess what? They never connected with me, but they got connected to me because I listened. <laughs> mm. But in reality, I'm not really connected because I haven't, I haven't spilled out what I, what I'm full with. Yeah. But because. I need to put them first so that I may win them to Jesus. I'm fine. I'm fine. So always make people number one in your life, then you will win them. Amen. Get to know what they do. You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be an actor. You don't have to be a businesswoman. Just get excited. Everything they do. Mm. Oh, I am an architect. 
architecture. You are not an architecture. You are not interested. In, wow, that's amazing. I want to hear about that. It's very boring, but just listen. <laughs> you could be the first person that has ever given them attention in all their entire life. Yeah. And then you can connect, and guess what? They will come to the mastery class just to see you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then before you know, they'll see your Jesus. Amen. Because it's such a lovely world today with technologies and all that. No one wants to listen to each other. Even when you are in the, you are, we are at home sometimes, somebody is on the, on the iPad, somebody is doing that and doing that. So you find that well, you may have one hour, but you only spend with a person five minutes. You spend five minutes only. Why? Because most of the time, you do not talk to that person. You connected with your, your appliances. You connected with your appliances. You connected with your phone, or with your computer, and all that. So the only time you connected really is five minutes. The rest was on text and other things. Now, that person comes here, you give them five to ten minutes, you listen to their story. Guess what? If they don't finish talking, they'll come again. So, one of the reasons why people don't come to meetings like this, they don't feel connected. The word is great, the anointing is great, but they feel disconnected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you tell them, Jesus is good, God has good plans for you, but they don't feel connected. So always look for common ground. Always. It's very important. Then, the other thing that you should know is that principles always transforms people. Principles transforms people rather than your religious way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So if you can introduce the principles, it will transform them. God always wants to transform your heart. And for you to get into these people's hearts, you must remember the business community don't care about love or relationship. But the Christian community, they care about that. Mm. I repeat, the business community, all they want is respect. Now, Christian community is relationship. So you must learn to build the relationship. How do you build the relationship? Sometimes, you need to deny yourself a little bit. Pause to what you know and listen to that other person. Yeah. Listen to that person, what he says to you. Let me tell you, if you can get their attention, you can preach your Jesus and they will be accept Jesus. Some of the mistakes I've made by dealing with the most influential people is that I want to be spiritual. I want to tell them about Jesus first and I want to pray for them. People have experiences that you don't know. So they must have had a bad experience with a Christian, they put you in a box. Yeah. Then you think these people, they are not trust, they are not interested in the gospel. They're interested in you, but they're not interested in what you're saying. The reason is because they have a bad experience about Christianity. So if you know their story, then you know how to communicate to them. If you can connect with them, you'll be able to help them find them where they are. Some of you, you start people from here, you leave them there, and so it's wrong. There's nothing wrong with them. It is just that 
they don't know how to connect with you. They just want you to connect with them. Not everyone who says he's a Christian knows the Bible, by the way. Right, right. Not everyone who claims that he started going to church when they were babies, they know the scriptures. No! So do not assume they know what you know. Always assume they don't know what you know. <laughs> Even simple things. Simple things you may think, oh, they should know about this. It could look, what is, e what is simple to you may not be simple to them. Because you don't know they are bad now. So, don't assume everybody is a Christian. I remember one time I assumed everyone was a Christian. Not until I preached John chapter 16, 3 the 16, for God so loved the world. And this man said, wow, that scripture is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, it's a Sunday school. Oh, really? I've never heard it by the word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said, did he, did he really do that? Thing is, in my head, that this is a Sunday school stuff. It wasn't, this man was 60 years old. It wasn't a Sunday school stuff. He has never been to Sunday school. He has heard about Christianity. He has heard about the messages of a judgment. If you don't believe in God, you'll be judged. But he has never heard about John 3 and 16. He knows great stuff about rapture. He knows great stuff about all this. He knows all the scary scriptures. <laughs> but he doesn't know about John 3, the 16, that so God loved the world. That's why it's very important to connect with people. People don't come to meetings because they don't have a... You, they, the people they meet, they don't want to meet them again. They feel they are prideful or they are super... Come on. Spiritual giant, and they feel sinners. Let me tell you: let no one come into this room feel a sinner or feel untouched and feel unwanted. When somebody enters this room, does not feel guilty or anything. Right. Yeah. Do not assume everybody knows what you know. Connect with them. For example. We had an atheist here. I won't tell you who that atheist is. The per that lady, she was an atheist. No one knew I knew her story. She came because she was healed by the power of God. Then somebody, none of the people here, somebody begins to tell her about repent and you must know Jesus. She said, I don't know about her lost things. Then she says, that person was so rude to me. Mm -hmm. Wow. He was so rude. He was telling me to repent and all that and pray for me. I didn't want to receive the prayer because the person was condemning me. I don't know why. Wow. You are nice to me. But that person. Then I said, oh, honey, understand. What he was meaning is this and this. Now, step by step. Step by step. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I said, you're going to meet many of them like that. <laughs> because that's a language. That's a language. Then, now, now I've got a revelation. I said, we are so far ahead. We leave people behind. Mm. We don't know how to bring them alongside with us. <clears throat> Let me tell you something about David. No one knew who David was. Even the brothers did not know that David killed the bear. They didn't know. They didn't know that David killed the lion. They didn't know. All they knew is a shepherd boy, a son of Jesse, and one boy. He was 
writing the book of Psalms out of distress, out of rejection. Wow. You, out of sorrow, out of pain. Mm -hmm. He was writing that book of uh, his frustration, his pain. If my mother and my father forsake me, but the Lord will always be with me. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yeah. Why are my brothers, his brothers were like his enemies? He says, he shall prepare the table before in the presence of my enemies. That was, that was his brothers who rejected him. He didn't have big muscles. He was a genetic, he was short but handsome. That's what the scripture describes his features. Mm -hmm. He was intimidated by his own brothers who were giants and smart and skillful, educated, but he was just a smelling, stinky shepherd boy. <laughs> but he cried out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He says, is it the sins of my mother? Right, right, right. In my mother's womb, I was born with sin. He started saying things like that in Psalms, in Psalms 20, in Psalms 53, 51. He begins to say things like that. In Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He begins to cry out. He was writing all those things, not a hell of fun. He said, oh, God is good. I mean, no, it was out of pain, out of rejection. And yeah, God was yeah. mourning him. God was speaking to him. God was speaking to him when he was saying, the Lord shall bless me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. That was kingship. He had the vision to become a king, but he had too many enemies. Yeah. Read the book of Psalms 23. He wrote it before he became a king. That's why he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside the green pastures, still waters. He prepares a table mm -hmm. in the presence of my enemies. Jesus. And guess what? He prepared a table in the presence of his enemies. What was the table? The Philistines were coming there. Mm -hmm. And his brothers were also his enemies. But he was there with five small stones. Mm -hmm. And the Lord allowed him, helped him to kill Goriath mm -hmm. yeah. with one small stone. Goriath was on the ground. In other words, it wasn't a rough stone. It was very small. Because God had already smoothened him up. Mm -hmm. That he didn't have to try so hard to defeat the enemy. Because when no one knew his story, how he <laughs> killed the, oh, yeah. the lion, how he killed the bear, mm -hmm. it was very easy to defeat Goliath. That's why the scripture says, what 
God has been doing in the sacred place. Yeah. Yeah. So when we look, we are new people, don't assume they don't know God. Don't assume they know what you know. Don't assume, do not assume they know what you know. Always find time to connect with. You don't even know the people that come could be the answer of that prayer. We prayed for your breakthrough, but your breakthrough was coming with that person. Mm -hmm. wow. So if we don't treat that person right, you just missed your breakthrough. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So, always know how to connect with the people. Sometimes, you'll be found in a situation where you don't have to speak in tongues. You don't even have to mention the name Jesus. It doesn't mean you're compromising. You are trying to connect with a stranger. You are trying to connect with a stranger. When you connect with them, they will ask you where you stand. Then you tell them that ah, this is who I am. My DNA is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For you and Jesus, you are inseparable. But you cannot just start preaching, repent, and, and do that. <laughs> you know, I've had people miss out the power of God in my life. They don't even know who I am. Sometimes, they, 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 I'm with them, they say, oh, I want to pray for you, you are from Africa, you must have a lot of witchcraft, so I want to pray for you, wow. deliver us out of you. Guess what? Okay, deliver me. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm anointed, I'm supposed to set that person free. That's right. Guess what? The person misses out. <laughs> That's right. i this guy, meets me in the road, I was going to preach somewhere. So I went on the back way, it was a big meeting. There was like 5,000 people. This person said, you are going to, to, to this meeting. I'm told we have a very powerful speaker. I've been praying for this meeting. And this person meets me at a, because I, I didn't find the right way to go to that place. So I ended up going to the normal entrance. <coughs> entrance. And this person said, oh, I was praying today. You know? I was praying that you should find somebody to pray. I think you are the one. I need yeah. to pray yeah. for you. Then I said, oh, sure. So he started praying deliverance and protection. Where are you from? I'm from Africa. He said, praying for all these things. And guess what? When I went to the platform, I was preaching. The guy couldn't even come to the queue because there was like hundreds and hundreds of people I needed to lay hands on. The guy was on the queue and said, oh, that's you. Please call me. The Lord already gave you the opportunity. Wow. You caught me all by myself. Mm -hmm. Come on. I had everything to release, but you yeah. chose to. Yeah. In part. To God. I deceived him, but you missed up. That's right. You know, and that person tried to find me on Facebook so you can have lunch with you. No way, Jose. <laughs> You had your time. I don't have time for that with you. God gave you the divine appointment. There you go. I'll need to meet some other people that are serious. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never, never don't, don't judge me. I've never met that person again. Because I don't just have time. The person, God gave us that opportunity. But he did it. He was too spiritual to receive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see, when you're in the presence of the great, you need to understand that I need to receive something. Mm -hmm. There was a man of God, you may not like him, but I like him. I think he carries a lot of greatness. Mm. T.D. Jackson. He was walking in London. Uh, this man meets some of my friends. They meet, they meet TD Jakes, right? They just say, hey, what's up, man? How are you doing, man? The man just saying, I'm doing great. Oh, can I pray for you? I can. And all that. You meet some 
number of influence like that. You say, please lay your hands on me. Come on. Lay your hands on me. Then you are being wise. Because that person was carrying something. So, that's just an example of how people miss out. There was one person I really loved. You know, we see, it says, oh, I'm going to this healing conference. I've been so sick for a long time. He's asking me that he's going for the healing conference. I said, go. <laughs> <laughs> and I encourage that person, go. Because the person didn't ask me to pray for him. He didn't have faith that, that he can be healed. So I had to send him to the conference. Yeah, yeah. He said, on. you go. services, they all got healed and they were telling him how they got healed and said, who prayed for you? He prayed for you. But you were with me. Why did you tell me? Well, you were going for the miracle service. I didn't want to Those are the people they bribed. Those are the people they made the relationship. 
And when they made a statement and said this city belongs to Islamic, all the Muslims they need to bow to the Islamic. All the Christians they need to bow to the Islamic king, to the Muslim king. Because they have obeyed the what? The king. And the king, he declares the whole state as Islamic. So as missionaries come with all the beautiful hearts, they were looking after beautiful children, they clothe them, they, they give them Bibles, hmm. they go into their home where the father said, no Bibles allowed here, the child will go and throw away the Bible. Because in Islamic they are taught that the father is the head mm -hmm. of the house. Mm -hmm. You do not have a choice to choose your religion, the father chooses the religion. Yeah. Wow. Let me just, I've studied Islamic, by the way. So, Muslims, men, they have the right to marry whoever they can marry from any religion, a woman. But men cannot marry an Islamic woman. Because according to the Quran, a woman needs to submit to the husband. So if, if you marry a Muslim woman, automatically she will be a Christian. Because that's what she has taught. So if a Muslim man, he marries a Christian woman, automatically she will become Islam. Mm. Because he is the head of the house. So that's why Muslim men, they can date whatever. It doesn't have to be Muslim. But, 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 but for the man to date a woman, a Muslim man, she must, he must convert first. He must convert, he must become Muslim first in order to date. But a Muslim man can date whoever. Buddhist, Christian, if you say yes, you get married to one of them. Either you like it or not, you are automatically a Muslim. And most of the ladies, they don't know these things. I know one lady who has been dating a Muslim guy. He said, oh, he's, he's going to convert. No, no, no. The day he gives his ring on you, <laughs> he is the head of the house. What he says goes, not what you say. And people don't know because they don't know how to connect. They don't know. You don't know. You end up being in the wrong place. Come on. It's the same like you've been serving God for a long time. You got frustrated with Christian husband or Christian brother. You make a decision, I'm not going to date a Christian anymore. You are killing yourself. Yeah. Because he is just a circumstantial problem that you went through. It doesn't mean that's how things are. Mm -hmm. You are a child of God. You are a child of the light. Mm -hmm. So if you want to enjoy life, you need to marry somebody you can connect with in your faith, uh -huh. mm -hmm. in your talks, mm -hmm. in your life. Don't marry somebody because of sex or because Come you are on. lonely Preach. or because you, yeah. you want a family. Marry somebody because you have a purpose and you connect with that person. Doesn't mean you won't fight, doesn't mean you won't have a difference, but you have a common ground. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So have a common ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the things that you, will help you. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same if you're doing a business, you can do business with non-Christian, there is nothing wrong. You can trade with Muslim Buddhists. Money is not Muslim. Money is not Christian. That's right. <laughs> so you can trade with them, but don't make covenants with them. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. They, let me tell you, there is a trading relationship, and there's a different on covenant. The covenant simply means I'll become what you want me to become, and then you will become what you want me to become. That's an agreement. Yeah. You don't agree on those things. 
but you can always exchange money. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. So, if you have a deal with a Muslim, go ahead and get it. Don't just make a covenant. Go ahead and get it. Get some money. Once money is in your hands, it's in the Christian hands. Amen. Don't be so religious and say, no, I don't want that Muslim money. I don't want this Buddhist money. No, no, no. Money is not Buddha or Christian. Money is just money. It's whose hands is that money. So most Christians, they fail to function in a marketplace like that. What I mean is, if you don't make covenants, you only have trading arguments. That's okay. Covenants means you're not going to go to his house, you're not going to go for vacations together, yeah. but you will make some email connection professionally just for business. Yeah. It doesn't have to know if you, have, you like pink or blue. No. It doesn't, it doesn't have to know if you like coffee or tea. No. That's not our the business. You just have to know, do you have goods or not? Can you supply or not? This is the language. You live in that way. God wants you to be wise. Not shrewd, but wise. Be as wise as serpent. And be as harmless as shut up. In other words, a serpent always wants to buy it, you know? You know what I mean by the serpent side? Be clever, get the money, and bring it to the kingdom. That's right. It doesn't mean you are being converted. You're just being like a serpent. You're being wise. You're maneuvering it. You're doing, go and get that business. Still stick with your Jesus. And you can always be in the restroom and pray in your house. You can. If you miss to pray in tongues, go to the restroom, rock yourself, and pray, 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 pray. And then when you go back, go and speak business language. Amen. And get the money. Get it. That's good. I do that all the time. Don't spoil your business by going, ra -ba -la -la. You can do that, son. Lock yourself, son. <laughs> Check it. You look, this is a place to make you a successful person. This is a place to make you a winner. This is a place to make you victorious, not losers. People that can influence the influence. Some of you, God is going to give you a billion dollar person. He wants an advice from you. Don't try and speak in house. <laughs> <laughs> Go and speak in tongues somewhere else. <laughs> the Bible says, He that speaks in a tongue edifies. So find somewhere to build up yourself, pack yourself. Yeah. When you have the muscles, then go there and use the language. Right. That's right. That's right. Also, to connect with people, know their language. Write down. How to connect with people, speak their, their language. language. It's very important. If you don't know their language, you cannot connect with the people. I don't want to keep you longer, but I hope you're enjoying my conversation. I just want you to be so powerful. Amen. So effective. I don't want you to make mistakes that I made. Yeah. Some people, the other point is, do not have an agenda on certain people who are influential. Simply tell them, I want a friendship with you. I don't want anything but friendship. They will ask you, what do you want from Tell them nothing. I just want to be there for you. If you can win their hearts, you can win them to Jesus. Because they are so lonely, they're just looking. Let me tell you, the world is so shrewd out there. It's so shrewd out there that everybody is taking from everyone. They're using their connections, they're using
giving everything. But you just go there and say, I just want to be there for you. I don't want anything. What will the billionaire feel? Wow. Wow. Everybody wants my connection. Everybody wants my billion. But this one just wants to come and have a cup of time, a cup of coffee. Don't talk about how successful the person is. Don't talk about all that. Just, what are you doing? How is your soul? How is your mind? How is your family? How is your car doing? Yeah. If he loves cars, how is your new car doing? Don't talk about your cars because you don't, your car may not be as nice as this. That's true. <laughs> so just go connect the person. Connect with them. At the end, they want to know you. And do not give yourself so cheap. Do not reveal yourself who you are right there. No, 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 no. Give in segment. Give in segment. Because who you are is different. You don't know where they are. If you tell them too much, you may lose them. So just tell them what they need to know at that particular time. Segment by segment. The Bible says, Self-control. Everybody say self-control. Self-control. In other words, even what you say is very important. When to preach and when not to preach. Yes. When to share your faith, when not to share your faith. Let me tell you, if you want people to know about Jesus, they already know who Jesus is, but you're showing them a different Jesus. There are people in the street that have already done their job. Jesus is coming tomorrow. <coughs> Give your life to Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. So, they already know. They have heard his name. Somebody has already announced on your behalf. But you are there to be a, you're a wise person, strategic person. Say, Lord, I'm, make me wise. Make me wise. Uh, make, make me strategic. So you are very wise and strategic person. You know what you want. You want that person soul to the Lord. But you know is an influential soul. You know that that soul is not a cheap soul. Does not need money. Does not need influence. They already have it. But they are looking for something they don't know. And you got it. But it's the way you package it. If you don't package it well, they won't receive it. If you package it well, they will receive it. So it's about how you deliver your package. I want you to be the smartest, the wisest, the most winner person. I want people from this group to win all the movie stars and all the billionaires. And how did you do it? Because you knew how to unpack yourself. You knew how to share. You didn't just go and say, oh, I'm a Christian, I fast every week. Oh, I'm a Christian, I pray every week and read the Bible. Use the word of God without saying God. Let, remember this. God has exhausted, has exalted his name. As, sorry, yes. God has exalted what? His word above his name. So when you share his word, she is all in me. That's what I wanted to say. Thanks for that. So exhort his word. Speak the word of the Lord. Speak principles. Speak the word. When you speak the word of the Lord, the name of Jesus will show up. Because God has exalted. The word exalted is that he has lifted up his word. And he will make sure it will not go void, empty. It will do its work. The word of God never fails on the ground. Your tactics will fail, your strategies will fail, but God's principles will always stand, will always speak on your behalf. So begin to share the principles of God. Then when they begin to say, why are you so wise? Why are you sharing this? Tell them you don't know and I know where I'm getting this. But when they ask more, tell them, 
I get them from the Bible. I know you do when I hear this, but it's all from the Bible. Just as what I'm sharing, everything I can give you scriptures. They're all from the Bible. You know, this is a different level of reaching out to people. Because we have many people that reach in the streets and the homeless. As long as you buy them a taco or you buy them bread, they will give their lives to the Lord. We need that. But there is a place where they can buy the whole shop of a taco. They can buy the whole shop of bread. They don't need your taco. They don't need your bread. They don't need your coffee. They don't need your, 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 your Kentucky chicken. They don't need your, your Starbucks. They, they got it all. How do you reach these people? Get to their heart. Get where? To their heart. Get to their heart. Get to their heart through strategic things, strategic words. Develop friendship. Poor people are the easiest to bring to Jesus. The rich people, it's difficult for them to come through the narrow, the small needle. The eye of the needle. So you're bringing them to the eye of the needle. We need the homeless to be warm because if we only reach to the rich, we are missing out. We need to reach out to the poor. And the way we can reach out to the poor, let's give them tacos. The way we reach out to the rich, let's develop relationship, integrity with them. Let's learn to connect with them. So that way, you will win because your lifestyle becomes the message. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I've told you enough. We'll continue and share more. I just felt that something is wrong with our meeting, something is wrong with our church. I really need to champion people into a different way. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, don't worry about the anointing is here. It's going to flow. Don't worry about getting slain. You already got it. Don't worry about casting out devils. You are bigger than the devil himself. Hey, don't worry about sickness and disease. You are on it already. But now, we just have to equip you how to unpack your authority and your anointing. So that your anointing can work effectively. Your anointing can be received. Let me tell you, if, it, if something is not special, no one will receive it. Shall we stand to our feet? Mm -hmm.